Mr. Owens. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Nadler and Ranking Member Jordan. Uh, Mr. Secretary, about a year ago, I visited the border town of McAllen, Texas, and what I saw was devastating. There was overcrowded facilities, families, and unaccompanied children gathering under a bridge to be processed. Within hours, these illegal immigrants with taxpayer dollars were put on a bus or a plane to travel to the interior of our country. It was unlike any humanitarian crisis I've ever seen in my lifetime. My Republican colleagues and I spoke with Border Patrol agents who were overworked and overwhelmed. Days before our arrival, there was a surge of un unaccompanied children, alone, confused, and helpless. They were sitting on the floor in this, in this facility looking, up these, looking at these adult strangers with no idea what to expect next. There were about 250 children packed in rooms designed to accommodate four, uh, 40. I'll never forget a little seven-year-old child, little girl, that was by herself without siblings, mother, or father. She was artistic, alone and afraid, and could not communicate anything about her family with authorities. She represents the 40,000, 40,000 unaccompanied children that have been trafficked, trafficked to our borders under your watch since last November. I noticed her because every time I looked over in her direction, she had tears in her eyes. The agents told me that she'd been crying for days and could not stop. We'll never know if she was stolen from her parents or abused by cartel perpetrators. It's become obvious to me that DSS, DHS doesn't know and doesn't care. In another community meeting yesterday, it was pointed out that some of these children were used over and over again by the cartel, taken back and forth like cattle. By the way, the reported the cost for these children, each child is $5,000. If that's not slavery today, I don't know what, what is. We vi you visited the border a few weeks after we had <clears throat> and had a polar, uh, polar opposite experience. As the camera crew followed you through an orderly and empty facility, you explained to the American people that you had successfully closed the border. You didn't see the seven, little, little seven-year-old child because these children had been moved to another facility out of sight, out of mind, on the same property. I love our country because of the good people who live here. Our American culture is one of compassion and empathy. We serve, protect, and provide for our most vulnerable. It is within our DNA, if we see human suffering, that we act, especially when it comes to our children. Mr. Secretary, over the last year, you have failed to act. Over the last year, you have, over, you have overseen the dismantling of our border, the villainization of our border agents, and have purposely refused to enforce U.S. immigration laws. You did not inherit this. You created this. Under your watch, the Mex Mexican cartel is now earning about $6 billion a day, a, a year, $6 billion a year as they profit from human trafficking and child exploitation, as they rape women and girls on their trek on their, uh, southern, to our southern border, as they smuggle Chinese source fentanyl to, into our country. Last year, we lost over 100,000 Americans to fentanyl. Over, after 20 years in Vietnam, our American body count was 60,000. I'd like to share some quick feedback from our constituents from Utah's 4th District, and I quote, the Mexican cartel seems to be in charge of our border and who crosses it. Removing Title 42 is wrong, reckless, and plain stupid. The Biden, the Biden administration has shirked their responsibilities to control the illegal immigrants on our southern border. The Secretary, we look back on our history and we see the stain of human labor and sex trafficking. We call it slavery. We survived as long as it did only because government bureaucrats chose to close their eyes to this evil. Profit and power were prioritized over compassion and empathy. We're living Groundhog Day 2022 today. I encourage you to, incur to change courses to end your empathy-free bo open border policies. If not, I promise you, American history will not treat you kindly. Seniors. Thank you, and I'd like to yield the remainder of my time to Ranking Member Jordan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, yesterday you announced the formation of Disinformation Governance Board at DHS. You put out a bulletin two months ago, big fancy bulletin here, red, white, and blue. You said that misleading narratives, mis dis and malinformation, MDM as you call it, misleading narratives undermine the trust in government. I was just wondering, uh, when the head of the CDC, Ms. Walensky, said that the vaccinated can't get the virus, did that undermine trust in government? Um, when the highest paid official in our government, the smartest man on the planet, Dr. Fauci, when he said the virus didn't come from a lab, did that undermine trust in government? And will that be something that this governing board will look at? How about, how about this one? How about when 51 former intel officials told us that the Hunter Biden story was, had all the earmarks of Russian misinformation? Will that be something that this governance board that you just formed, will you be looking into that? Uh, Congressman, um, 
the disinformation board uh, addresses a disinformation that imperils the safety um, uh, and security uh, of our homeland. And one of the primary areas that we are focused on is the dissemination of disinformation and its potential connectivity. But that's not what your bulletin talked about. Uh, the talked gentleman's about time COVID. It, and the gentleman, about COVID. The gentleman's time has expired. The wit I am permitting the witness to answer the question. But the gentleman can say nothing now. It's oh, witnesses. Uh, let me know privilege when privilege to answer something. the gentleman's question. Yeah, and Continue it's uh, your answer. and it's connectivity to violence. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentleman's time has expired. Mr.